do the intro. All right, here we go. Welcome to the Dope Dive Live. I am your one of three hosts. I'm Sunny Starblast. I am joined by my co-hosts, King Crazy and Dragon. Dub a dub dub. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. We have finally returned from the Netherworld intact. The Netherworld? Also known as, I gotta take my mom out shopping, and so I can't. I have to miss a Sunday. Also, also work. <laughs> also, other stuff. Right. Bill. Live in fear, young people. Live in fear. Old and don't get old. This is a testament to not growing old. Stay old mean, forever. Don't do it. It's a trap. So growing wait, does that, does that, are we telling all those people to... Um, no, we're telling them to stay young forever. Um, uh, stem cells research to extend your life past um, 100? I, if I can pull it off, go for it. I will not say yes, and I won't say no. Make of that what you will. Like, if you have a thing like sell from DBZ, maybe. <laughs> hey, PSK, how you doing, man? I haven't seen you in a minute. Uh, yeah, oh, I forgot. We're we're talking about uh, Tekken versus King of Fighters roster. And this is King Crazy's brainchild, so... Brain. This is his brainchild. He has a brain. It works. I promise you. King Crazy, take it away. Again, I am King Crazy, your leash, and I'm here to talk about a game that honestly will probably maybe get made down the line, but who knows? It's not how it gets made. Well, it might because currently there's this game, King of Fighters All Stars, for mobile, and they have Tekken characters in there. So, at the very least, some people from both Namco and SNK. Sat on, sat on at a, at some sort of table and talked, which is a lot. So, so quick question there: the, the, the yeah. easy way for that to happen is that ba- that Bandai Namco um uh, produced the game. Did they produce it? Because because that's how we got Bandai Namco characters in Smash. They produced um Smash Ultimate. Wait, I can put my phone screwed. No, they didn't produce nothing. They made, they created Smash Ultimate. Nintendo produced it. Oh, oh. How, how how does that work again? Um, they they developed it. No, Nintendo yeah. developed it. Um, uh, Bandai paid for it. That that's what it was. Oh. And then they went to pretty much everybody and said, "Hey, can we use this character?" I mean. If if we get into a talk about Smash, we'll be here all day. I'm just gonna say I I competed in a Smash tournament yesterday and I lost soundly, which is fine because I don't play Smash that much. But um, there are too many characters. So wait, well, wait wait till, wait till the next one. Featured character. And it'll just be a trailer featuring Sunny Star Blast, literally. And you're like, "What the fuck? How?" And and and, and you'll be a playable character, and you the, will, and you at the, home. The next Smash is going to be a, a, a definitely a smaller game. The Ultimate was the finale love child from Sakurai, and uh, he is he is not doing another Smash game. So I mean, if it's called Ultimate, it should be the last one because Ultimate means. It's not gonna be the last one because Nintendo likes money. But yeah. the, the the amount of effort that was put in to get all the agreements for Ultimate won't be there for the new game, especially since the main person who drove everything is not gonna be directing the game. Didn't Sakurai also make Kirby? Probably. Uh, again, uh, most of these most of these um talents started off as developers and um in other projects, then moving up to what they are today. Well, before we get too off track, 
as we do. Let's jump right in, because this is a crossover that technically could happen, because both sides have had crossovers with Capcom before. With the very, very, very well-loved Capcom Pro SNK series, the wildly forgotten SVC Chaos, and the janky as hell Tekken versus Street Fighter. No oh. clue how that even worked, but I've never played it. So. Oh, like, okay, it was, like, it had tag teams, which was fine, but it also had a mechanic that it sacrificed one character to power up the other character, and once the power-up runs out, that character died. Died? Which is, yeah, which is like, why would you do this? This makes no sense. And also giving all these Tekken characters 2D whatever the hell, and trying to see if that worked when like for some of them it worked, others not so much. But let's just put it this way. It it, it bombed so hard, Tekken Cross Street Fighter was cancelled. Ah, not cancelled. It's put into indefinite limbo. It's cancelled. Oh, development uh, hell. It, 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 indefinite development limbo, hell, yeah. It's cancelled. Let's just put it this way. There's no active funds going towards making the game. It's it's just put into the backlog of stuff which may never get made, like Text Advance 3, because Octopath right. Travel and Bravery Default is, is replaced it. Hmm. All right, but the thing is, Tekken Cross Street Fighter was actually going to take the same idea, but have it be in a Tekken-style arena fighter. Yeah, which would be easy because Capcom has 3D fighting games. They could just use the characters and designs from that instead. Not exactly, because some of them would look way too cartoonish, but uh, Kuma from Street Fighter was in Tekken 7 as a story-relevant character, which was weird, but it worked, it happened, let's move on. And funny enough, also in that game, as DLC, Geese Howard, uh, like one of the most popular final bosses in fighting game history, and it actually proves that, in concept, a crossover between Tekken fighters and te and Tekken can work, in spite of what the veteran Tekken fighters say. They really didn't like the te the two D characters getting in there, but what are you gonna do? You can't please everybody. Oh, that that's how game is. game design works. You can never please everybody. But they tried anyway and let us suffer. Anyway, that's beside the point. What we are doing here is, and this is going to probably piss off Dracon. It's going to just be Tekken versus King of Fighters. Guest characters are going to be kept to a very, very, very severe minimum. Wait, what? Well, why that pissed me off? Because you kept talking about Metal Slug before this. Be but what are you talking about? Their main characters, they, they've been in, in the last three King of Fighters back to back to back. <laughs> How do you mean they, they're main characters? They're literally in the King of Fighters. They're back. from Ikari Warriors, not Metal Slug. They're from Metal Slug. They were in Metal Slug. They're not from there. No. Um, oh. Two of the three started off in Metal Slug 1. I don't know what you're talking about that they all in Carry Fighters. I looked it up. They were in Metal Slug. They were Metal Slug 6. No. Ralph is Metal Slug 6. The other two are from the, the original Metal, um, Metal Slug. Hi, Katie. Hey, Katie. Okay. So... In light of that, too bad I've been in this, so shut up. Anyway, first off, we're going to go into just some little ground rules. Tekken 7 had a DLC characters that they were in there, and they had you know all sorts of gameplay mechanics put in, and that was great. But storyline-wise, they never got anything. So one of the rules that I put in for myself was have those DLC characters in starting roster just to give them that extra time because some of the stuff that they are going through is like okay it's like, it's like we need a resolution like right now before Tekken 8 or else this is going to get weird really quickly and we'll get to that plus this other character who is in spite of her own storyline stunningly unimportant if you play Tekken you probably know who I'm talking about like she should be important by design but isn't <laughs> Which is, is kind of hilarious. Is it John Kazuma? No. No, not John. We'll, we'll get to her. 
Trust me, the fact that you know Jun Kazuma's name and not this other person proves my point entirely. But anyway, the other thing is that this is a martial arts tournament. This is going to be, by storyline, well, quote-unquote storyline, yes, the King of Iron Fist tournament sent invitations to everyone, including people from the King of Fighter side. And due to reasons, they're like, screw it, let's join in. But also, three-person teams, canonically. And that includes the Tekken cast, who mainly are kind of loners. So, yeah, we got a lot of interesting matchups there. Like, tag teams are one thing, but three people? That was the challenge. And finally, when it comes to sub-bosses, it's not just well, it's not just one person. The sub-bosses are actually boss teams. Just so you can get a little more variety in there. And make things a little more interesting. Okay? Mm. But enough chatter. Let's jump right in. Our first team. By the way, for the love of God, can you actually see this? Yeah. Dracon? Of course, Team Maori. It's it's always Team Maori. It's not Team Maori. Kia would Team smack I- you for that. It's Team Maori. Kia K- 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 would smack go, you for um, that. Can go can go eat a pie. It's always about Iori. Literally, there is an isekai manga about Iori right now. I don't know why. What? Is there really? <laughs> yes. Did you, oh, okay. Wait, wait, hold on, hold yeah. on, stop, listen up. Is he is he going to another world, or or did someone from the real world? No, go to him? Yuri goes to another world. What world? It, it's it's literally a, a, a fantasy world, and uh, there there is this prophecy about Yuri being like the 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 demon that brings change. Oh well, actually, you know that tracks. <laughs> That tracks entirely. <laughs> and but the best anyway. part is, is that Yori sees characters that look similar to, like, like he sees a girl that looks like Athena, and he's just like, ah! <laughs> Wait, why, why is he right at Athena? He, he doesn't give a shit about her. No, no, it's just like he, he notices characters, and, and he thinks it's, it's they follow him from the King of Fighters universe, so he's looking to fight them, and he says, oh, wait, no, it, it's, it's not from the King of Fighters universe. It's, it's, this oh. alternate, it's this alternate world's version that looks like, like them. Is there a Keo? There has to be. Um, there are hints of a Keo. I haven't gone. I haven't gotten too far in it to, to know whether Keo is in it or not. But yes, we're now, talk now. This later. <laughs> I know. we'll talk about this later. Okay, <laughs> so team number one is Team Sacred Treasures. You got Keo, the actual main protagonist of the story, not not Iori, but people forget that. Uh, you got Iori Yagami, who's probably the most popular one. And Shizuru, who is the third person, because okay, Shizuru doesn't really show up much, only for like big important Orochi shit. But Kyo and Iori, by their well, by their fan bases, kind of pull her along. So, yeah, like if like for these two together, she's always the third. By the way, wink, wink, if it comes to, like, you know, Orochi shit. But we will get to that. Anyway. Oh, another thing that I mentioned. On top of interactions with each other, they also have rival fights with an, with an opposing team. And the next one is their rival fight, and it should be a little obvious. This is Team Sacred Treasures. And here is Team Rivals. Mm-hmm. We got we got Jin Kazama, Ling Xiaoyu, and Warong. And their team up basically consists of these two people who shouldn't give Jin the time of day, but God help them, they it's like they give up so much for him. And he's ungrateful as fuck about it, but wait, he still cares, we think. Who is the guy with the eye patch? That is Warong. Remember him from Tekken 3? The Pinky Taekwondo guy? guy? Yes. He lost an eye. Saving he lost an eye, and his hair is now fully black except for one red streak. I, yeah, no one signed up on the hair 
But the eye patch thing is canon. What? So yeah. Jin went into the shrine for his own reasons. Chao Yu would join him, and Wong would would join into against Jin's wishes. Like he so. wanted to do it himself, but you know, that's that's how things shake out. They're here to help him out in spite of himself. Well, I, I can see how this ends. Jin becomes Devil Jin and kills them both. Wonderful. No. Yep. Calling it now. No. He would try to kill them. Get it right. Anyway. <laughs> let's move on. And oh yeah, but their interaction, it'd probably be like Iori and Jin just staring each other down. And like the like the other four were trying to break it up, but it but it's like this was gonna happen anyway. Like they knew. It's like from Jump Street. It's just it's just how things shake out with them. Nice. You'll be like, hey, um, go call your daddy or your granddaddy. I need a word to your opponent. And he's like, did you just compare to my father? I just, and, th- and, then, and then the fight. Anyway, next up, Team Fatal Fury. So, this was obvious. We had to. Wait, let's, Are call this okay? the right, let's call this team the right name. Team Buster Wolf. No. Yes. yes. Team anyway, team the wolf. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we gotta have Terry Bogard. He's been in King of Fighters since the beginning. Like does and he's and that's never gonna stop. He's like the guest character in everything. So that so that so this goes without saying. But then you got my Shiranui. She is kind of the leading Man female service. lady. No. Sir, yeah. Oh, yeah. The the picture you have here is clearly fan service picture. That's all she does. No, 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 in no, the no, no, no. This was not the fan service picture. Jesus Christ! This th- every, this is PG. Every picture of her is fan service because she's jiggling all the time. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to argue about it. Jiggles. I'm just saying she's the fan service character, even though she is a good character to play as. So basically, the moral of the story: someone buy my my share and a sports bra for Christmas. <laughs> How are you a ninja? And I've I've been hearing this question since college. Let's just move on. I'm we also have saying. Kim Kefwan. He he's he's like he's like a Taekwondo Bruce Lee. He he's all about justice. And I kept thinking about this about this roster, and I'm like, I can't have this game without him. He's Wait. like he's fun. How could you not have um, Terry's brother instead? That will make the more perfect team. His wildly unpopular brother. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, it, it makes more sense that that Andy Bogard will follow Terry into this over this guy. If if we got Andy, then we'd also have to get Joe Higashi. And there's a reason why I didn't include them, just because they're fun, but my and Kim are more popular. Well, no. Well, it's, isn't my. And they, Okay, so, I mean, if I remember correctly, isn't my and Andy dating? I, I forget how, how that thing works. Uh, technically, no. Like, there has never been any confirmation on that. It's one of those I things can... where it's, it's, it's those things where she loves him, he is oblivious, and everyone just rolls their eyes and move on. I could have sworn the Fatal Fury movies they actually got together, or it's been so long I don't remember. No one remembers. But anyway, the interactions with these other characters is why I actually wanted Kim in there, because he's all about justice to a hilarious degree. And it's just funny. But anyway, so, then we wait, get wait. to... I, I gotta ask yeah. you something before we go. So is Kim gonna be um, the equivalent of Five Fantasy, so instead of saying chaos everything, he's gonna say justice for everything? Justice! Oh. Justice! Justice! Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> we are... Anyway, they're rival fights. And for Tekken carries, this makes sense. Team number one. So, we got Paul Phoenix, Martial Law, and Ganryu. Three characters that I... Like, you notice that they were all in Tekken 1. And they all, over time, became kind of jokes. Yeah, like the butt of their own jokes. It's and actually got... kind of sad that Law became a joke since it, it, you can tell he's just based on Bruce Lee. Him and his son, but his son is in well, let's be honest, an idiot. So we're going with, but him and Paul have been friends for 
literal ever. But you don't really see much of them hanging out with Ganryu at all. And yet they all kind of want the same thing. They all want to actually win the tournaments, but just for different motives. Paul wants the glory. Law wants the money. Ganryu's out there for love. Well, so, not love, love. It's He's a simp. It's a whole thing. So, so um, uh, quick question about Ganryu. Yeah. Is he an Uchiha? What? No, because he's not dead. No, because I'm looking at that symbol on his on his thing. Does he have the sharing gun? <laughs> no. Unless, uh, well, unless, uh, unless a specific female character shows up, no. Again, simp. And oh, he is. Lord. And certain words you're not he, supposed to say on Twitch for reasons. I know you're allowed. I know you're allowed to say, so I won't say it again. But. Yeah, and uh, it, so it, it has it has been. He's stimpy going? then. What I guess we could use that word instead of the stimpy? word that can't be used. Stimpy, stimpy. like like running stimpy. Like running stimpy. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but we, we we can take out two letters from that, and everyone can understand what the hell we're talking about. Cool. All right. And funny enough, Ganryu is the least popular Tekken character. Like, like he's, like he's one of my weird picks, but his personality works with Paul and Law so well that I just couldn't let it go. And he's not, he's the least popular, but he's not like a weak character. Like, this, like, Tekken games have walls that you can do extra damage on, and Ganryu's pressure game when it comes to walls is pretty godly. Like, he would, he's actually very dangerous. And when it comes to, like, storylines, Paul is one of the strongest Tekken characters, so he would be a good match for Terry. Like, he won Tekken 3 until the other guy transformed and he already left. Like, remember what I said about him being kind of a joke? Because mm -hmm. no one believes him. Like, no, I beat Ogre! And everyone's like, yeah, sure. Whatever, man. <laughs> and and Law just has, you know, crippling debt, so he's relatable. <laughs> anyway. Team K Dash. So these three uh. I, them, I know, I know. I put them in because they're never in anything. I mean, for good reason, no one likes them. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, 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 they, they are popular characters. It's just no, that no. for some reason, they are. I did the research. They are. The thing is, they were all canon characters by 2001. Like, what? Well, you know, by, let's see, from 1999 to 2001, they were the main faces. But they weren't in Capcom vs. SK2. Uh, or a, or any or any SNK crossover after that. So can I, can I just call them by their real name, Team Ice Skaters? No, only once an ice skater. Eh, close enough. Anyway, we got K Dash, who is the kind of, but probably not, but still kind of Keo clone. We got Kula Diamond, who is the ice skater, and the anti K Dash, but. She loves ice cream and it's just fun. And we got Maxima, who is a cyborg with a positron candy in his chest. And Canadian. So there you go. And he's also kind of a well, not kind of he has a grapple character. Like he's the big guy. Yeah, I'm hoping this team loses first and disappears. Well, let's see the rival fights. Team Women Fighters. So we got Asuka Kazama, Lily, what her last name is, uh, Blanche, 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 No, no, not, no, not Blanche, Blanche, that, that's somebody else. Mm. Anyway, Lily, whatever her last name is, and Kunimitsu too. Isn't Lily an android? I forget. No. 
Oh, that's You're Mary thinking... Rose or some something like that. No, 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 no. Lily is not the android. Someone else is the android. Okay. Is it the Kunoichi lady? The Kunoichi lady is not an android. She's just a ninja. Why? And why, she's is, the... why is there a two in her name? Because she's the daughter of the original Kunimitsu from Tekken One. Yeah, though he had a daughter. And she is a high profile thief, but also still in high school. So she would infiltrate their school in order to get close to Lily. But then she found out the tournament. They'd all enter in spite of Asuka's, you know, not wanting to go, but Lily would drag her. And Queenie Mitsu want to rob Lily. So yeah, they're all together. <laughs> And Lily would be the one starting the fight against Kate Ash because Kate Ash would not would not give her the time of day. That is her entire character, and everyone around her would suffer for it. Okay then. Next up, Team Super Heroine. Yeah, I don't know these characters. Surprisingly, oh, it's, it's Athena. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. I tried to fight against it, but we had we had to get her in there. Like, I, her I know actually... the character on the left. I forgot what her name is. Oh, on the left with the blue hair. Yeah, I know who she is. I've oh. seen. I've played her in KFK Referee. I just forgot what her name is. That is Leona. Oh, right, Leona. There we go. She's also a, yeah. a grappling style character, as well, if I recall correctly. She is not. She She's is... not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's more rushed down. Oh, rushed down. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I meant. But uh, did she have some type of grapple moves as well? Maybe like, oh, is that just her grab? Yeah, yeah, it's just her grab. Okay. Okay, but these are the three that are yeah, they're female fighters, but they're actually like insanely popular. Like Athena, who's just a mainstay. You got Leona, who is very high on the on the play stats. Like, like people choose her a lot. And on the right, you got Luong. The most popular character from KOF 14. Like, of the new characters, she's the top one. That's why I didn't know who she was. Like, I didn't play KOF 14. Fair enough. And she is honestly that mysterious one. Like, it's like there's, there's apparently more to her than we know. Like, she is married to Kim's master. And they were all Team Korea, but she herself is not Korean. And she enters King of Fighters 15 because someone who should not have anything to do with her contacted her to join Team Secret Agents. So we don't know what she is. But she's popular, so screw it. And Leona would grab them both because she wants to infiltrate the tournament because there are some strange things going on. But we'll get to that. And their rebel fights Team Justice. Mm-hmm. You got Lei Wulong, you got Steve Fox, and you got Yoshimitsu. This is one of the weird teams. Yeah, like, remember what I said about getting the Tekken 7 DLC characters in there? That's Lei. You got Yoshimitsu, who I had to put somewhere because he's one of the main faces of Tekken, and Steve because he knows Lei. Wow. But how's the rest That's of the terrible. team? Um, how are the rest of the team going to know Yoshimitsu going to stab him in the back by stabbing himself through the stomach? You do that all the time. Yeah, I know. Close to him. Oh, by the way, it's not like a tag team fighting thing. It's like... Actually, no, wait. Actually, no, wait, it is. Shut up. Shut up, mistake. Because for Tekken, having like a round-robin thing would take too long. So yeah, it would be a tag team thing. He could stab himself and hit one of them, but why would he do that? That'd be so weird. Because Yoshimitsu. He's weird enough to do those kind of things. See, that one, no. he's, he's dumping in the sword. No, no, he would stab himself to hit the other team. Not them. That's what you think. He's not. He's not a bad guy. He seemed justice. No, he's he's just the um chaotic neutral. 
he's like a Robin Hood character. Yeah, he's a thief. And he's part of the Manji clan, if I remember correctly. Yeah, but, but they're but they're but they're a team of Robin Hoods. They're it's like it's like it's like they're they're one of the better good guys of the series. Thief's a thief. They're Robin Hoods. Anyway, their rival fight would start with well, Lei being a huge fan of Rathena. Because Lei is a fan of this other uh, idol character in Tekken, Lucky Chloe. So we'll just chance that over with everyone else kind of rolling their eyes and just trying to, you know, just to like, kit, like round one, please, let's start now. <laughs> but also, they would have to turn it together because, again, strange things are going on. Strange things. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, team art of fighting. You got Ryo Sakazaki, you got his sister Yuri, and you got King. Ah, yes, I remember King. Yes. Again, when it comes to popular characters, she is on the top usually. Like, de- like, like at least top five, if not top ten. I'm remembering she- here. Were they they were the ones that would be that were jokes based on well not jokes, but um uh Design based on Ryu and Sakura, if I recall correctly. On Ryu, yes. But then they made, but then Capcom made Dan make fun of them. But then they made. Wait, actually, no, wait. Ryu was first, then, then them. And then it was just a whole back and forth because they had Sakura, Capcom had Sakura, but then they also had Yuri. I don't remember who came first. But from what I hear, Dan is the olive branch. And yeah, that's why that, Dan that, didn't... <laughs> I remember that Dan was a joke character, really based on on him. After they based on Ryu. <laughs> yes, Dan is Rio, Yuri, and their friend Robert Garcia put together as a joke, and 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 that's why Dan's in every Capcom SNK crossover. Yep, like, and all the fighters so too. Yes, Rio is based off of Ryu, which is why they have a special intro in CBS Two. It's it's like it's like everybody knows they get it. It's like it's yeah, all man. good fun. And then Yuri and Sakura who are just like almost exactly the same. Yes, but when it comes to or poses and taunts, her rival is always Dan. Like mm. he ripped off her so much. <laughs> it's it's hilarious. Anyway, their rifles team new faces. By the way, if you hadn't noticed, I'm taking uh, you know, old school Tekken team. Yeah, King of Fire's team names and giving to everybody. What the hell? Why, why is T Pain in this? Didn't we go over this <laughs> last time? <laughs> because why he's in love T- with a stripper. Why is T Pain in this? <laughs> We had this okay, whole discussion I, already. We have to call this team Team T Pain. I don't think we could call it anything else. Team Auto Tune. It's it's oh, Team New Face. Stop it. Yeah, not Team Auto Tune. I I, I, like that. I I nominate that as well. The overruled here, uh, King. It's Team Auto Tune. No. <laughs> two to no. one. No. Also, the, the fake giant on the left bugs me so much still <laughs> because he's massive in the trailer and he turns out to be like three feet shorter in the real gameplay. It's one foot shorter, man. Come on. That's still too much. We know. But anyway. Oh, by the way, I would actually have him to scale this time. Okay. So um, get... Who's the girl in the middle? I don't know who she is. Oh, that is Lydia Sobieska. She's from Poland. She is the Polish prime minister. And she entered the tournament Wait. in seven. Yes. Yes. She, she entered the tournament in seven because the Tekken force wouldn't leave Poland and she called Heihachi, and Heihachi was like, yeah, make me. And, you yeah. You know what? She got guts. Instead of sending one of her, one of her team, my people from, from Poland, she went herself. That, that takes yes. some balls. Yeah. And another thing about her, her fighting style, it's like everybody in these fighting games has, like, karate plus something else. She actually has, like, true traditional karate. Okay. Okay. And, and um, then you go. Sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, then you got Leroy Smith, T Pain, and and he's got Wing Chun, and honestly, one of the dopest soundtracks in Tekken history. And then you got Fakum Ram from Thailand, and he is a Baki character. Essentially. Clearly. Yes. Clearly. And they would get together because, well, with all the new people, but because the Mishima Zaibatsu is being the Mishima, well, the Mishima Zaibatsu, Thailand would reach out to her because they know that she's a fighter, and they would grab Leroy as their third because he'd be strong. He would hear about him from the underground circuit. Okay, let's get the real reason why they'll be teamed up together. Not they T-Pain! Love, no, they all love autotune, and Mishima Zabatsu is trying to outlaw autotune. That's why they're coming in. Let's go! <laughs> I hope T-Pain goes to your house and smacks you. Both of you. <laughs> anyway. T-Pain needs to follow me and subscribe and send all his in followers fact, here. In fact, all of you listening should follow and subscribe. For more of our exciting content and discussions. But anyway, their fight would start <laughs> with, well, kind of sort of weird. Like, you would have Lydia and Ryo just trading, you know, karate moves. Just, it's like, they love karate so much. They, it's, like, it's like, they would get along immediately, which would piss off King because she's actually in love with Ryo. And Fakuma would just be like, I don't, I don't know if Fakuma would do in this. Like, he doesn't have a personality yet. Me, me, meanwhile, like, um, T Pain would be in the back just singing. No, <laughs> yeah, no, he will. actually, actually, Sonny, you should know since you saw the trailer. Uh, Leroy has a dog, Sugar. Yeah, the, the, I think the dog comes out for someone. Yes, the dog will be playing with uh, Yuri, and Fagaram would be doing. So- it's like we have to figure out his personality. It's like, what is he? Like, like, like his whole thing is that he is Thailand's personal suicide squad. So is is he gonna be like um Baki's dad? He's gonna bring out the, the demon back and start fights. I feel no, like Baki he actually... would, Baki's dad would absolutely demolish him. Baki's dad would, would demolish everyone in this thing, but Fakaram's whole thing is that they wanted him to the government wanted him to fight for them. He said no. They took his family. He's like, damn it. And now he has to go to tournaments on their behalf to win. Or else something will happen to or else never he'll never see his family again. So I guess he'd be the one to just shiver by his side and just like just like let's just get started. You know, I have a family to save. So yeah. It's a whole thing. Anyway, next up, Team GAW. So we got Antonov, the sub boss from King of Fires 14. We got King of Dinosaurs. And we got On Hell. All of them wrestlers. So my dude with the, the fake dinosaur head is named King of Dinosaurs. Yep. Oh, 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 I know definitely who he's going to fight. That's because- my king. And so, you know, the king is gonna is gonna be like, you took my name. King crazy, if you uh, did, if you did not put them up against each other for this roster, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally going to end the podcast. So I'm assuming it's king, and then king two, which is like the the darker king or whatever. Or the, it's also the panther one that I remember as well. Let me get to let, let me get to that. Your questions will be answered. Don't worry. But yeah, Antonov would grab these two wrestlers and after them. And to promote his new wrestling circuit. And he is like the one boss in all of King of Fighter history who hosted a tournament for no other reason than to host a tournament and have fun fights. No no ulterior motive at all. He just he just wants to prove that he's, you know, the top dog. Like he called himself the original King of Fighters champion. Even though he showed up in King of Fires 14, and that made no sense. He is silly, he is stupid, but he's fun. And then you got Angel, who she's sadistic, but also fun and popular. And you got King of Dinosaurs, who is one of the more popular characters from King of Fires 14, and he is definitely not Tzok from Gower Mark of the Wolves. 
that other Fail Fury game. Definitely not him. He will deny it to the teeth. Anyway, next we have Team Tech and Tech. There's your king. Okay. Like, like wait. Okay, like, hold, 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 hold on. Hold on. This team is wrong. Is this there like another king that replaced this one, and this one's supposed to? Die? We will. We will get to that. Oh, There's reason why. About armor king. Yes, we'll get to that. But we have King. Obviously, we got his friend quotations Marduk, and we got JC from Tekken Tag Two, who is definitely not Julia Chang. Get out of your head. What are you thinking? But anyway, mm. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, King and Marduk have a whole storyline because Marduk killed the original Armor King in a bar fight. And King had a whole revenge quest for Tekken 4, 1, and then that drove Marta crazy for Tekken 5. Then they fought again. And it's one of those, oh, they fought until friendship. So, mm. so, so that's why they're, they've worked together ever since. So that worked out for them. And then you got JC, who showed up in Tekken Tag 2 as a mysterious new fighter who has Baji Kwan and some Luchadora moves, and she would reach out to Kang because there's a reason why she has to be in this tournament. You know, the strange things happening. Anyway. I think this is where we get to the boss teams. Like, the main roster would start off as... Uh, let's see, it's eight teams on each side. For a total of 16 teams. Mm. So this is where we get into the boss teams. This is one this one's literally called Team Bosses. And we got Geese Howard. Geese was also a DLC in Tekken 7, so I had to get him in here somewhere. And because he's one of the most popular final bosses ever. So yeah. And then we got Ryuji Yamazaki. You might know him from CVS 2. He's insane and also a member of the Orochi clan, but he's so crazy that Orochi can't influence him. So we, we sure that he's not Geese's um, uh, bastard no. son? They, they, no. They look I pretty know. close. No. No, they are not. Ah, uh, yeah, no. Nah, they, 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 that, that, that's his, that's his um, child from another mother. No. Maybe. Anyway, then we <laughs> got Shion, who is the sub-boss of King of Fighters. It was Eleven. And just gonna put it out there, that is a man. Of course, but also, it is. but also he is a wushu specialist and can summon weapons. So, kind of a counter to Yoshimitsu, who has the sword in a tournament for martial artists, because sure, that's that, that is totally legal. And again, Xian's a weird pick, like. Like he's a character that I figured could have been brought in at any point, but I guess I don't feel like it. But still, I thought it was cool. But anyway, if we're going to have Team Geese, you know what's coming. Team Heihachi. You probably don't know who the other two are. <laughs> and that's fine. So I'm just unhappy uh, that not know about that ogre is in here. Wait, but when did Jennifer okay. join King, um, Tekken? Ha 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 ha! <laughs> anyway, remember that lady that I was saying was wildly unpopular, even though she shouldn't be? Yeah, that's her. That's Zafina. Her whole story is she, she wants to prevent Kazuya and Jin from fighting each other because they'll unleash the ultimate evil. Except Jin destroyed the ultimate evil himself in Tekken 6. So, so she got no purpose anymore then. You would think that, but then she sealed the ultimate evil. Like it, it wasn't like dead, dead. It was lingering still, but she sealed it in her left hand, which you can't see because uh Yeah. But it's that constant struggle of trying to trying to like hold that back. And and so she finds Claudio, 
the other guy because he leads a group of exorcists. And Claudio wants to hunt down Jin and Kazuya because, you know, exorcists. It's like his whole job. And in Tekken 7, Claudio was working with Heihachi, so they already know each other. And Heihachi is so much of a son of a bitch, but still not Jin or Kazuya, so Zabina wouldn't really care about him. Like, he, like here's a big guy that she, that she could throw at a problem. Cool. And how it would work is the other two would be, you know, the first ones that you would deal with. And then you get the big boss intro of either Geese or Heihachi. And there would be a score system. Depending on how well you do, you would get them. And then... Let's see, they... like In Tekken 7, Geese has this max meter from Camp Fires 14. It piles up your specials and gives you another super. In this game, everybody would have that. And after you deal with, well, in this case, Claudio and Zafina, then you would get Heihachi, who would have that meter maxed out the moment he jumps in. Okay, and their confrontation, pretty simple. Heihachi and Geese, by internet standards, don't like each other. Like, they have like it's a constant thing on Reddit on who would win, and then uh, the Screwtech channel Death Battle had them fight each other, and Heihachi won. But then you got Geese show up in the Tekken Seven trailer calling Heihachi a scrub. So they don't have beef, but they kind of do. So we'll just play to that, and. Claudio and Zafina can notice when someone is like not human. And here you got Yamazaki, who's a descendant of a demon clan, and you got Shion, who might be a demon himself. Yeah, that whole saga where Shion was there, it was weird. Like there's like there's no other answer. So screw it, he's a demon. He's a demon who likes money. Fuck it. Aren't we all though? The money part or the demon part? Both. Sure! Anyway. If you get a high enough score after unlocking these two teams, you can then get into the other boss teams. And this is where we go a little nutty. Because this is because this would be like the final trailer before the uh, the game launches. The G Corporation building that Kazuya runs being attacked by Team Rugal. Oh no. I know. Yeah, here's the thing. So in CVS2, M. Bison and Geese were on the same level. Like, they were both this extra fight that could just happen if you get good enough. So, yeah, and they have a, a, uh, what do you call it? A, damn it. Like, like, interaction against each other. So there's that. But the final boss of the game was either going to be Rugal or Akuma. So they were on the same level. And then you got Geese and Heihachi, who already were seeing the same level. So we got Team Rugal, who would also be kind of Team Orochi. Because Rugal has Orochi power given to him. And his, and his secretaries, Mature on the left, Vice on the right. They're both descendants of the Orochi clan, too. And they were sent in to watch him. It's a whole thing. But... They've never actually been on a team together. He was the boss of the first two games, died, and then they entered with Iori for the next tournament. So we'd finally get all of them together, and they would attack Kazuya's place, 
because Kazuya has a power that Rugal would want, because Rugal is Rugal, and that's what he does. Speaking of Kazuya, here's his team. This is where I have to explain things. So These two. That's original king. That's uh, not and Kazuya. No, that's Armor King 2. Armor King 2? Yeah, remember what I... Yeah, remember what I said? Marta killed the last one. And King, damn it, King had a whole revenge quest to go after Marduk, but eventually they became friends. But unbeknownst to King, Armor King had a younger brother that he, for some reason, conveniently never mentioned. He took, and they were both Armor King in the past, like there was a whole picture with those two. And then Armor King came back, went after Marduk, and instead of having him have the same thing as Marduk, you know, like, oh, they fight and they become friends, why don't we have Armor King actually become worse? Like, okay, Tekken 5, Marduk, if you play as him, he beats King in that fight and goes on an absolute rampage all over organized sporting events. Like, if it has a ring, he'll show up and kick the shot out of everybody, laughing his ass off. But that's not canon. What if we have this Armor King do that? Because he'd be hanging out with Kazuya, the ultimate bad influence. Hmm. And, then you, and then you got Anna Williams, who has worked with Kazuya in the past as a secretary, and is a whole assassin in her own right. Like, that would be an... Oh, and also something I have to point out. I, like, I don't know if you can see it on your end, but uh, Kazuya's left eye... Yeah, it's glowing. Yeah, how it's red. And then you look at Rugal and how his right eye is red. Yeah, that right there would be the final shot of the final trailer. Just a split, just a split screen between those two. Kazuya looking pissed and Rugal having the time of his life. Again, oh, oh yeah, um, Rugal has a. Actually, what do you call those strips where they have like all, like? Yeah. No, 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 no. Bigger and has and has guns. Bullship. Yes, Rugal has one, and and he would just launch a flat assault on G Corporation headquarters. These two. Um, Return Vice would go after well, Anna, who would, who would happen to be there, and Armor King would be there because he got invited. Like, give me a whole thing. Like, from Tekken 6, he doesn't actually like Kazuya, because Kazuya does experiments on animals. Monster. Yeah. But, like, we wouldn't get why they, like, why King was, Armor King was invited, yes. But, We'll get to that. Anyway, Rugal would be like, uh oh, 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 I wonder if and Kazuya would be like, fuck you. And bam, they fight. And Armor King, like, like he got buffed in uh, Tekken 7, so he has, like, I would say his fighting style would change to be more like a heel wrestler, like, 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 like a cheap son of a bitch. Like, he has a move that straight up punches the enemy in the nuts. <laughs> like, like give him, like, every dirty move a wrestler can do. And just run with that. Like, you have King, who would be the good one, and you would have Armor King, who would be an absolute bastard. But still on a revenge quest against Marduk. And you got Nina, who would join back up with Kazuya, because... Her storyline in Tekken 7, Nina unknowingly killed her fiancé. So now their already pre- pre-existing rivalry is now full-grown full grown revenge quest on her. Like, like, this is Team Revengers. And, you know, because we have the most revenge-driven character of them all. But on top of that, same thing with 
Team Geese Team Heihachi. The other two characters would go in, weaken your team down, but the moment Rugal or Kazuya hit the field, they transform. In Tekken 7, if you get Kazuya low enough and then his rage activates, he can turn into Devil Kazuya. Rugal can also turn into Omega Rugal. Yes, in the storyline, he's supposed to die when he does that, but screw it. It's, it's, like, this whole thing is not canon. Fuck it. So the moment that they hit the field in that boss fight, they'll just transform and now you have to deal with, the, with these monsters. Hmm. Yeah. But here is the thing. Neither Rugal or Kazuya, or Heihachi, or Geese would actually be the ones who created this tournament. People would assume it's one of them, but actually, it was like, it's like they're looking for the one behind this too. To take whatever power that they have, because that's what they do. And the person behind all of this, Gonitz. I have no idea who from, that is. He is from King of Fighters 97. Mm-hmm. Wait, no. No, 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 no. 96. Excuse me. Like, he's the guy that gave Rugal the Orochi power. Like, it's like, it's like there's a whole group of Orochi clan members, and he's the leader. He beat the shit out of Rugal when he was a teenager. While Rugal was a grown ass man. And he's the only guy stronger from then. He is one of the cheapest SNK bosses of them all. He drops a localized tornado on your location. And he can do that, that repeatedly. And that and that tornado reaches from the floor to the to the top of the screen. So he has keep away options, but he also has a lot of close range options too. Like, he is genuinely dangerous in every way. And on paper, well, let's see. You have Rugal, who he's stronger than. You have, and you have Kazuya, who has been proven to fight Akuma to a draw twice. Remember when I said Akuma was a storyline character in Tekken 7? Yeah. Yeah. Akuma beat the shit out of Heihachi. Put him in a coma for a week. But Kazuya, we never got a clear winner on that. They fall on the top of his building and then Heihachi decided to be sore loser about it and used his satellite laser on them. Which they both survived. Yeah. And then after the final battle of Tekken 7. Akuma shows up to fight Kazuya again. Kazuya turns into Devil Kazuya. And again, no clear winner. But we know for a fact that Kazuya is going to be in Tekken 8. So take with that what you will. But we have proof that Kazuya is on Akuma's level. You have this guy who's on Akuma's level. And you have these two who are, on paper, not on a Klima's level. Close, but not quite there. So I needed a character that was stronger than them. All of them. And that's him. Because anybody else... Seems kind of dumb. Like, like a lot of the characters that I could have used wouldn't work in a Tekken game. Because one uses his coat to fight, another is using like all his lasers and other nonsense. And the last one, no one even knows who that guy is. And plus, he also has a personal beef with Kyo because he wanted to see who the latest member of the Kusanagi clan, like how strong he was, proceeded to kick the shit out of him in front of his own house, was like, oh, that sucked, and left. And that's why Kyo had to like redo his entire fighting style to fight him. So, yeah. Plus, he killed... Hang on. 
he killed this lady's sister, which is why she's in the tournament at all. And he also, because he's the head Orochi guy, can drive Iori insane and go Orochi, or if you know who that is. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, um, basically Iori, but insane. That's the character in a nutshell. So he has personal defense with all three of these people. But he'd be one of the final bosses. Like, there are three final bosses you can get, like, true final bosses. But he's the final boss for the Tekken side. Well, sorry, for the, uh, for the KF side. I keep doing that. It's okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's all about unleashing his god, Orochi. But, in order to mix things up a bit, I, was, I, like, I had the idea of a final boss that's actually all about preventing this kind of thing from getting out. Like, like hey, here's a, here's a big evil god thing, and this other character's like, nope. Like, let, let, let's put a lid on that. But when it comes to tech and final bosses, there aren't a lot of them that aren't a Mishima. Like, there's Heihachi, then Heihachi, then Kazuya, then, or, then Ogre, then Heihachi again, then Jinpachi, then Jin, then Heihachi again. I know, no, um, Seven was Seven was Heihachi's long dead wife. Who gets summon a tiger? It's a whole silly thing. But there is somebody else. Jun Kazama. Jin's mom. And she'd be all about not letting this thing get out. And she already has a Kazama fighting style, but she's she was the final boss of Tekken Tag 2. One of them, it's a whole thing. But she would have a lot of characters. Like, uh, it's like anything that would make a Tekken character a pain in the ass to deal with, she would have it. Sure, he does have it, just have more. Like, he'd be a nightmare at mid to long range. She'd be a nightmare at mid to close range. If that makes sense. It makes sense. Nico, are you still there? All right. Dracon, Dracon, damn it. All right, where are you at? If you're talking, we can't hear you. Plus, you know, the whole being Jin's mom thing, they'd have a lot to talk about. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Right. Because I noticed someone hasn't been going against anything I say for the past 20 minutes. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, boy. I hope he's okay. Oh, my God. Did T-Pain actually come to his house and slap him? Watch out, Sonny. You'll be next. You don't have to come here and find me. It's T Pain. He probably find us all. He's probably streaming right now as we speak. I'm not even gonna bother to find out. Actually, I'm gonna bother because he brought it up. Hmm. Actually, never mind. I don't care. Hmm. Actually, never mind. I don't care. Whoop. Oh, fudge. Well, okay. keep going. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have our starter roster. We have our four different sub-bosses, depending on, how, depending on what score you get. And we have 
these two final bosses. But then we have the thing that this has all been about. This is where I actually pull some uh, some plot points from both sides that never really got resolved. Okay. So let's get to it. The final boss of this crazy ass game, Orochi Ogre. We're gonna name the podcast. You said you wanted him. Yeah, I wanted just regular ogre. Yeah, but. Here's the thing. In Tekken 4, a plot point was how Heihachi got Ogre cells from after Jin beat him in 3. But no one ever did anything with it. Like, they have it, but no one ever, but they never did like anything at all. However, that means that they're still there. So, Gonitz would grab those cells and also take the cloning technology from nests that the ether used to work for he used it to make a new body for ogre and he would want to put his god orochi into that body in order to bring him back into the world at full power because he tried to do the same thing with rugal but rugal wasn't strong enough but this thing is a motherfucking alien so yeah the people that were going missing well, yeah, Ogre's just strange. an alien? Yeah, Ogre's an alien. I always thought he was just a monster from the Abyss in the Earth. Whatever. Nope, alien. It's a whole thing in, let's see, the Tekken Tag games and in uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Homeboys from space. Anyway. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so Gonitz would give the Orochi power to this thing, and that would be enough for Orochi itself to awaken in Ogre's body. However, it's Ogre. This thing goes insane immediately. Either yeah, either Gonitz tries to wake it up and it kills him, or Jin tries to destroy it and it kills her. Either way, here's your final boss, and his whole thing is mimicking people. Like, he'll either absorb them and take their moves, or just copy them. Just because. And oh, the strange things I was mentioning, people were going missing. In case anybody asks, hey, why wasn't this person in the game? Because shut up, it was it was the thing's fault. And go nuts. So around the arena where you would fight this thing, you would see tubes with other characters in there. Like it's like if you played MVC or wait no. No no no, X-Men versus Street Fighter. The tubes with the other characters in them? Yeah, like that. Okay. And this and this is what Ogre and Orochi have in common to be whatever they are they need like the energy of fighters whatever the hell that's supposed to mean so that's why this tournament needed to happen this was all an elaborate ruse to create this thing to become a Rochi and end the age of man which Ogre probably done anyway but yeah Okay. So, this is the Orochi thing that... One second. This team would deal with, and this is a whole Tekken 3 problem that this team would deal with. And plus, Tekken 3 is the most popular of the Tekken games. So, yeah. Like, these two would want it. These people want to destroy it. They would want to destroy it. Well... These don't want to just kill it and you know get the prize money. These this team would want their tech back or to destroy it so it doesn't happen again. Uh win the tournament, destroy the thingy, destroy the thingy, and save the uh kidnappies. 
win the tournament, win the tournament, win the tournament, win... Oh. They want to win the tournament, but JC specifically want to save a specific kidnap person. Because also involved would be uh, Genesel from Tekken 4. I'm not going to go into that, but it's a thing that Julia Chang created, which JC, who is not Julia Chang, would want to get. <clears throat> anyway, take the power, take the power, take the power, take the power. Witness my God, destroy God. There you go. Everybody has a reason to be in on the ship, even if it's stupid. Plus, I happen to find this non green ogre just like just random photo on uh on google and i was like you know who it's like you know that crazy tattoo or what she has a crazy tattoo what do you know hmm. anyway oh and uh sunny yes sir you might need to check Messenger. Like, I do not have my phone at the moment, but I think Draco might be messaging us. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I'm here. What's up? Oh, you are? Okay. You guys are just in time. This is the final boss, Orochi Ogre. Oh, wait, you all calling for me before? My bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, I noticed that no one was saying anything against anything that I was saying. And I was like, wait a minute. Where's Dracon? <laughs> Like, like, he, really, like, he, doesn't, he doesn't let me talk this long without saying that I'm wrong about something. This is true. Yeah, no, no, that, 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 that's my bad. I, I was moving around. And I was in a spotty area where the connection was going in and out for, for hair and stuff for a while. So it's like, okay. It's all great. Okay. Okay, so anything that you did not hear, uh, let me know. Because here okay. are our sub bus team. Yes, these four are our sub bus teams. Okay, there so is go. is this um joke or serious Heiachi? What do you mean joke? It wasn't Heiachi like a joke character in one of the Tekken games? No, this is serious Heiachi. Heiachi has always been a joke. I said what I said. And in some of the endings, yes, but some of his endings I mean, are silly. Person. When was he a joke as a person? He sucked. There, I said it. What? But anyway, you would have him, and you got Team Geese, you got Team Rugal, you got Team Kazuya, you got Gonitz from KOF 96. Yeah, it was 96. And you got Jun Kazama from Tekken Tech 2. And the final boss, Orochi Ogre. And he would have a bunch of moves from both sides. Like a bunch of characters that weren't in this game, he would just have a bunch of their moves and be a whole final boss from there. Like this is like a lore friendly final boss because Ogre could technically get a bunch of fighting styles from the KOF fighters. So I don't know why Capcom didn't do that when they had him, but whatever. There you go. So that would be a total of. 51 characters at launch. But let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven would be unlockable. But like, like, like you'd have to beat them first to get them. But uh, yeah, that would be our starting roster team. But of course, you know how it is. DLC. And again, to keep it simple, three seasons. All we need. It's super simple. Too much DLC. There should be none at all. It should be all the characters from the start. No. Why anyway. pay for why pay for characters when the whole roster be there from the start? Because <laughs> money. Anyway. We will have season one. By the way, can, can you see my cursor? No. Yeah, slightly. Yes, yeah, I can see it now. That's annoying. Does your cursor disappear? No. I wish it would. Oh, no, no. 
probably better and, that you have your cursor up, so at least we know what you're talking about. And then soon your curse disappears and you can never see it again. Whatever. Anyway, season one. So yeah, it'll be six characters each season. And it'll be technically two teams each season. But the teams are, well, kind of random looking, I I would assume. Like, I just look at them. But anyway... You got Lars Alexanderson, his best friend Alyssa, the android that you're actually want, that you're actually wondering about before. Yeah, she's Alyssa Boskanovich. Got you. The tentacle Xenosaga character. Seriously, Tekken 7, she has a costume that's straight up custom from Xenosaga. And oh, okay. because and because she wasn't in Tekken 7, but everyone was wondering where she was, Christy Matiero. Uh, you mean the Junior. one who who um, took over for for Eddie? Yes, and about that, because all the DLC characters from Seven, like yeah, they were older characters, but they got you know like you know fresh new designs. I would have her be more of like, and I can't believe I'm saying this. You know those B girls, you know, you know those break dancers. Like she'd be more of that. To have her to have her be more different from Eddie. Like their characters are mainly they're like they're exactly the same, but his moves are slower but more powerful. Like in this game, I would I would want her to be like more slippery, but also just more style. But she also be one of those So what's what I'm looking for? Like down with the establishment types. Like she's like she'd be just doing parkour, spray painting all over the place, just you know trying to wake people up to the madness that is the Mishima Zaibatsu and and G Corp, both of whom have had a hand in kind of destroying her life. You know, if she ever knows before this, like she should have every personal reason to go after both Kazuya and Jin, and technically Heihachi. So. You know, just Christy, less Eddie, more angry. Make sense? Yeah. Great. And on the SNK side, we got Shune from KOF 14. I wanted him in here because his design is absurd and Tekken lets you change costumes. Look at him. What is this? But anyway, then we He's got the Fresh Dai... Prince of KOF um, Air. We're talking about the person with green hair, right? Yes, that is Shunei. Yeah. The new protagonist so... with a with a weird power that he can't understand, but we don't know anything yet, so whatever. He's, He's a protagonist Shin with Megami... a heart. He's a Shin Megami Tensei protagonist. Yes. Look at him! <laughs> like Shimigami like Shimigami Tensei, Kingdom Hearts, World Ends with You, take your pick. I wouldn't say Kingdom Hearts, but World Ends with You. Yeah. Like it's like people don't hate him, but it's like his designs are all over the place. So, so have many games that lets you just change costumes on everybody. People would love that. So basically, how this tournament is going to go is, is when Yori's battle happens at the start of the game, the first battle, um, they, Yori gets one punch, and he wakes up in, in a, a new world. And that's how we got Isakai. There you go. You're welcome. Ha 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 ha. Anyway. Then we got Guy Tendo. Uh, remember when we were talking about Baki with Fakumram? Yeah, he's he is the SNK character who is based off of Baki. And he was a guest character in KOF 11, but he was the star of an old school arena fighting game that SNK made called Baruki 1. Like like they already made a Tekken game, but no one really played it. And you can't really emulate it now, but they had him as a guest and what I said about this whole about this game being kind of a tag game, yeah, he's the anti-tag character. He has a move that if it hits you, 
neither he nor the character he hit can switch, and he gets a power boost. So whoever's in the ring is his bitch until he's done or until they somehow beat him. And again, he's a Baki character. Do that what you will. Have him have a whole special intro with with this monstrosity. And just go from there. And then the final character of season one would be Shaolan. She is from KOF Maximum Impact. And Wait, I, I didn't know Shao Kahn became a female. Shao Lan. Shao right. Kahn? Damn. Stop I'm it. telling you. Seriously, where you you that that can become female. See, this is why I was wondering where you went for that for that whole like 20 minutes. Like, <laughs> like, it, it, this, like, uh, this, like, you were, like, you were the hub. The habitual line stepper. That's you, Dragon. A habitual line stepper. At the center. Wait, wait I, you, I got a line. I, I, I thought I was just like, eh. Let, 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 see what's, see what hits. Anyway, Shalon is the actually one character from KOF Maximum Impact, the 3D arena game that nobody played, but she is the one character from that game that could be rolled in without any baggage or without being stunningly annoying. Okay, so got you. So she's the first one to take out. Wonderful. Ha 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 ha. No, like I, I ain't is... joking there. She 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 got no she basically got no stake in the battle. You could take out easy and it's 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 nothing gonna affect anyone. Actually she does have a stake in this. She is actually part of an organization that's been around since uh KOF ninety nine the Hizoku, they don't really have any people in the tournament. They're like some weird assassin group that that goes after people with weird powers, but behind the scenes. And she would be after him because they don't know what he can do, but they would want to know. And she would actually be with him, would actually go after him and try to make him like Team China. Oh, uh, like, okay. I, I thought it was just that um uh, she was actually hiding for when the Street Fighter crossover happens so she could chase Shadow Luke. No. Or Sin. What? Well, what's, what's that new organization of Street Fighter now? I think it is it Sin? I don't even know. It was already shut down. Don't worry about it. What now the organization. Now, now it's the Illuminati with Gil. Uh, but not really. But, but not really. Because you want. Okay. Side issue. Um, yeah. Apparently, one of the characters in Street Fighter V. The latest guy, Luke, his whole storyline happens after Tekken 3. So with him being there, the gilding's already over. You mean Street Fighter, the third strike? Right. He it's said over already. <laughs> it's well, um... finally over with this one character, but no one else. Anyway, I shall be right back, guys. Please keep talking. I'll be right back. You know, sure. you're joking. Yeah, the Street Fighter storyline is insanity. In every oh way. God. Yeah. But anyway, you got these, you got uh, Lars, Alyssa, and Chrissy, they'd be like team anti-Mishima. And then you got these three. Their whole thing, like... Okay, they'd be called like team other worlds. But like, well, not really, like, like team other other dimensions, because their first appearances in any fighting game, they were all 3D. Yeah. After that, they have no other reason to team up, but whatever. I don't know. She would call them to... Fuck it. Nobody cares. But, yeah. But, yeah, since... But, yeah, he's the new kid on the block. She's a weird pick. And he is the original KOF 3D fighter. So, so we got to get him in there somewhere. So there you go. Next, season two. All right, so here we have Team Agents and Team Ash. We got Dragonoff, Nina Williams, Blade. I mean, Raven. I was going to make that joke, but you did it first. Cut. 
Yep, in first. And then we got Rugal's son, Adele Hyde Bernstein. We got Elizabeth Blantorch. And we got the biggest son of a bitch in all of King Ho- KOF history, Ash Crimson. Is Ash, Ash is, um... Male, yeah. Okay. Very uh, androgynous. Oh, yeah, that's what everybody thought when he first showed up. But he's a dude, and he is a bastard. Like, he was the main protagonist of his own series of games. Like, from KOF 11 to 13, he was it. However, he was clearly antagonistic because he stole powers from Iori and Shizuru. And nobody knew, like, nobody knew what he was doing, but it was clearly evil. Until it turned out, oh, actually, I, I was good. I was actually good the whole time. Anyway, I'm dead. I'm dead now. See you at the crossroads. Poof. Until they brought him back for 15. Like she had him brought brought back for 15. And technically, all three of them would be the main. Like they're the main protagonists of that section of KOF games. Except, not him really. I just want to see him in a game with his dad. Like, okay. Rugal's favorite thing in the world on his bio is his own evil heart. Like, he just loves being evil. That's Rugal's whole thing. But he had kids. And he left them money. And a whole air... Like a whole airship. So I guess he cares about them, but we don't know. It's weird. Mm -hmm. But anyway, all three of their fighting styles will actually work pretty well in this second game. Well, not Ash Crimson so much, but I would actually steal moves from his uh, ancestor. It's a whole thing, but KOF 13, there was a character that looked exactly like him, just with longer hair and a and you know different color clothes. But that character had more physical moves. So I would just be like, screw it, move those moves over to Ash Crimson, and there you go, and just there you go. Seriously, no one will mind, no one will care. And as you can see, Elizabeth has a, has a writing crop. She'd be another like anti Yoshimitsu character. Like, oh, haha, she has a weapon too. Okay. But going after them for reasons that I don't get to think about. Team Asians. They are all on the job to go after them, but Raven and Dragonov already have this whole rivalry. So it'd be nice. To, it'd be interesting to see like how they would deal with each other, while Nina would, like Nina, who is you know the iconic female of the second games, will be just you know all business focused, trying to get the job done. Like they would, like they would be teamed up to try and capture Ash. Screw it, and but Ash's team would be in here actually trying to capture. Uh, but, but Xion, of course, because Xion was from a group that screwed over Team Ash, except Ash screwed them worse. It was a whole thing, but yeah, there's a reason for them to be involved. And I went with Raven instead of Master Raven. Because, I mean, yeah, sh- Master Raven knows Dragonoff, but again, they already know they already know each other and don't like each other at all. Wait, is Master Raven the same as Raven? Uh, Master Raven is Raven's teacher in Tekken Seven, and yeah, she's cool, but Raven has that personal history, and. Like she brings it up while she's fighting Dragonoff. 
So it's like with these two, it's more personal. But you give them the order, they'll work together with Nina to get Ash. Because he knows things. He's that character. Oh, wow. Mm. Ash, Ash got left back this late. I'm surprised. Why is there a blade? So many questions. But, yeah. This is like right around the, well, around this point. These were like these two teams were characters that I took out of the main roster just to keep it, you know, like to a good number. Also, I have to honestly say I, I hate this pose for Ash from, from the from the latest KOF games. I prefer the previous um silhouette they had for Ash. I don't know. This one just there's just something wrong with how they how they did the face in this. It just looks wrong. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Well, well, it's not his series anymore, so who knows? Like, who knows why they did it? Like, it's like who knows? Like, they just decided, hey, let's just have a reason to bring everybody back. A thing exploded, and now everybody who was dead can now just appear again because reasons. But anyway, Blade is here because. Spirit, why not? And yeah, Blade, his vampire looking rival, and Nina Williams versus Ash, his adopted sister, and Rugal's son, who is more of a Tekken character than Rugal. Plus, you, like, there are no games with those two together, so I would just say, like, hey, have them together. Screw it. And anyway, this was season two. And so is Rugal was dead by this point? Rugal's been dead since 95. Mm. But with the recent developments of KOF 14, it is very possible that he can come back. Plus, the developers of the KOF games love him. Like, like he's their favorite character. So if there's an opportunity to bring him back, they'll take it. Now, I'm not saying that the uh, leak list of the full KO15 roster is true, but it has been true so far. So, with what's upcoming, take with that what you will. Maybe, maybe the boss will be a particular person. Maybe not. Who knows? So let's stop now. Anyway. Next, we get season three. This is the one where I want your money. This is the one where it's like, screw it. This is the final season. Anybody who wasn't interested, we have to get them back now. So, Robot, Devil, Jin, uh, Pachi. Jin, Pachi. Ten Pachi from Bleach. I don't care. They're all something Pachi, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so you have Prototype Jack. Ah, it's he, a Jack. There we go. Yeah, because in all these second games, there's always a Jack. But Jack itself is kind of a goofy character. And I didn't really feel like put him in on any of the other teams. But at this point, I was like, screw it. Let's have, let's have the goofiest Jack of them all. The Prototype one, who is... He's just clunky. He he has bits and bobs that just spin around at random, and he's just silly. I mean, look at him. He's like he's like a T one from Terminator, just like the first one. Like this is it. This, it's like this we have first as a Terminator, and on the opposite end of him, we have Rock Howard, one of the most popular SK characters of them all. So, yeah, people are going to pay for him. <laughs> Money. And then the thing that should have been season one, but screw it and screw you, uh, Devil Jin and Orochi Ori. We had, uh, we had to get these two in. I mean, look at them. They're right there. And as our final and special final bosses, Jin Pachi Mishima, the cheapest, like one of the cheapest. Final bosses in a tech game ever. And Silver from the aforementioned Baruki 1, who also showed up in KOF 11. 
and and how he enters the ring is picture this you will get a versus screen for who you're supposed to fight let's say it's kazuya you will then be in the baruki one ring your characters will walk into the ring only to see kazuya get thrown through a door unconscious between an inch of his life as silver walks out frothing out the mouth and ready to just leave it in the ring and punch you down that's how he that's how he enters the ring in Baruki one and yeah he he does click akuma maybe that maybe maybe he was based off of him who knows but yeah it's a way to start the fight and you got Jinpachi, who is basically Heihashi with fireballs. But in second attack, too, he has his own set of moves, so he's cool. Like, he would have been the final, he could have been the final boss instead of Jun, but fuck it. Like, it's like, season three is just fuck it. You got, you got heavy metal and hard rock. You got the two evil versions of guys who already were kind of dark in the first place. And you got these crazy old men. Just, just to round everything out. Okay. So this is everyone. You got your 48 regular characters, you got your three bosses, and you got 18 DLC for a total of 69 characters. Ah, uh, yeah. It took weeks. Weeks I waited for this. We, we, we to make this one sex joke. <laughs> but anyway, as I you can see, off. yes, yes, I am. But anyway, Someone as you can see, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> but, anyway, <laughs> but anyway, as you can see, there's all these combinations of characters you can make. Like, there's like so many teams that you could do. Like, you could have Jin. And Kazuya and Jun together for Team Family Matters. I don't know. You could have, uh, you could have King, Angel, wherever she is. There she is, and King of Dinosaurs as Team Mexico. You could have, let's see. Oh, you could have King, King, and King of Dinosaurs. As Team Kings. Yeah. You could have Shion. Uh, where the hell is it? Shion, Shaolan, and Shune as Team China. You could have let's see, Steve, Marduk, and Christy as Team Tekken 4. Lars, Alyssa, and Zafina as Team Tekken 6. Who the hell is in Tekken 5 again? Whatever. And let's see. Well, I can find anybody. You got Raven, Yoshimitsu, and Kunimitsu as Team Ninja. You can have uh, Kyo, K Dash, and Ash as Team Hero. Like, there are so many ways to have this roster just, just mix and match. Like, like extra costumes, extra nonsense, cats and dogs jumping up and down, just all this crazy shit. Hell, you could have a team of uh, Jen, Rock, and Adele Hyde as Team Blood Vengeance because they all hate their dads. And you got Team Kazuya, uh, Rugal, and Team and uh, Geese. As Team Daddy's home, you should have named the first like, team Team Daddy issues. But that okay. that that last name sounds wrong. Yeah, it does. That's that is the point. And you could have Iori, Leona, and Yamazaki as Team uh, Bloodright because they're the Orochi members that aren't with the clan. I, they, like like they actively fight against them. You could have. Kazuya, Heihachi, and Jinpachi as Team Mishima, obviously. Like, if they if they would ever work together, but, yeah. Uh... 
There was another one that I've... Oh. And this is where we get weird. Jen, Paul Phoenix, and Craig Marduk as Team Neo Japan. Because Kyo's original team was him, big guy, and dude with that haircut. <laughs> Fuck it. And then Team T Pain, Blade. I want the other dark characters. He's not T Pain. Yes, it's T Pain. We I mean, pretty the last time um, we went over this, we had a picture of T Pain dressed yep. as the character. So you have those those characters going to say Team Frankly a Black Group. Team BET. Anyway. <laughs> yep. that works. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> it's like, okay, you're going to have Team. Let's see, you got King, Armor King, and King of Dinosaurs as Team Animal Kingdom. Kingdom. I'm going to. I'm Kingdom. Going to, do do, do I'm you get it? Ban you. But do you. But do you get it? Anyway. But anyway, that is the lineup. I'm sure there are people who are like, hey, why is this person in? And I'm like, shut up. You figure this shit out. But also, you know, like, share, subscribe, and you know, thanks for watching. Hi. But anyway, um, another thing that I actually want in this game, Tekken Force Mode from Tekken 3. Oh, man, I love just, that. Just, uh, it's like just a whole beat-em-up side game. You play, is it, but also with team functionality, like, like, like just grab two of your pals, pick characters, and just, and just run through armies and armies of people with guns because all these characters can do that. But also, at certain points, you would get boss characters if they might be characters that are in this game, there would be characters that are not. Whatever. Screw it. But, uh... Hang on. But yes, that is the roster. Any questions? Concerns? Um... I admit, questions. some of them are just... An yeah, some of them are just anime as hell. I mean, I expect that with King of Fighters. Yeah, like look at these people with all, with all their being relatively normal, except for the cat people. And look, and look at all these anime characters. So except for the cat people, except for Yoshimitsu. Oh yeah, Yoshimitsu, who's just like the weirdest of them all. And he knows it. <laughs> like it's like there are other characters that I wanted to get in. Like there was this. One kind of character who is a high school girl sumo. Like it, it like you added like, the sumo girl. You should also add in Kuma slash panda. We got Sunny Star Blast. Do not support Chalo Beast. I mean, oh no no. No no the oh, oh the girl isn't fat at all. You just she is a she is a skinny she's a skinny kid. Who wants to be a Rikishi? Well, we do love Rikishi, so I endorse it. Yeah, but unfortunately, she hasn't been in the game in like a, like, I think around a decade. But she still shows up in endings, so it's like people know her and want her back. But it's like they have to make room for other characters, which is kind of the issue with KOF games, where it's like they want to bring in new people, but they have to bring in how many old, older characters back? I mean, they could just write it in their backstory that the character died. But they nope. brought them back to life. They're, they're bringing them back to life right now. It's like, a whole plot point in KO15 is that some characters were dead, but now back. Except most of the characters who are in the game now are not dead, so... Well, they were never dead in the first place, so I don't know why the hell they didn't... It's like, it's like, it's like they did it all just to bring Rugal back. Like Rugal and Ash. It's it's like Bison. Why wouldn't you die? Except now he is dead. Probably. Nah, I, 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 I'll believe it once I once I find that he stopped possessing someone else's body. Like last time he died, he took over Rose's body. Yeah, but then Ryu hit him with the power of nothingness, and that killed him apparently permanently this time. Until yeah, what, what, until. Now go ahead. What, Watch him come back possessing Ryu. 
and it, it just becomes um a evil Rio V two. No, no, but now he can't because Rio's got the power of nothingness. Possessing can, on the other hand, psycho fire punch. Anyway, uh, oh, so, oh yeah, you can have Paul, Lydia, and Rio as Team Karate. I want to call it Team Cobra Kai, but that's not allowed. Why isn't it allowed? Because licensing. But I, and plus, they have nothing to do with Cobra Kai at all. But oh, anyway, it's a K. this isn't Mortal Kombat. Doesn't have to be. Oh, with a K. Cobra and then Kai with a C. There we go. We they 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 can't sue us now. <laughs> they they can still definitely sue us anyway. They can probably send us a cease and desist. We'll cease nothing. We cannot cease the sun. Yeah, no mercy. But anyway, I mean, we, we oh. can by just looking away from you for like about eight hours of the day. That's a you problem, not a me problem. Oh, uh, Kim Kaf Wan, Lu Wong, and Warong as Team Korean Justice. Team Korean Justice. It is a long standing team in the games, and it's Kim's thing that he will grab people. Who he sees as villains, and you know, teach them about justice. So, so um, Team Best Korea then. Uh, no comment. But <laughs> like, like, uh, like how it usually works is like the, like he'll grab two people and and they'll let him think that whatever he's doing is working on them. The road that's like okay, we have Kim Kaf Wan. He is crazy powerful. Let's just use him. Win the tournament, and then we'll bounce. But it's like, it's like that happens all the time. Because Kim, in spite of you know, like he's a nice guy, but he's not. He, he he's not that quick on the upkeep. To be completely honest. And what else? Oh. Rio, Gaitendo, and Silver as Team Baruki won. Because all three of them were in that game. Prototype Jack, Alyssa, and Maxim as Team Heavy Duty. Because they're all either cyborgs, robots, or somewhere in the middle. But yeah, for all the purposes, this is a nice lineup. Yeah, you got a good. variety. You got a variety of characters, some good bosses, and DLC that people would pay for. Because, haha, fill my pockets, fill it with, fill it with your money. But also, the other part of this game, and the reason why I actually wanted Prototype Jack in this, the Tekken side would be a bit of a prototype for the, what was it for Tekken Eight? Because people aren't sure like who's really going to come back. So this would be kind of like a testing ground for characters that are definitely like on the chopping block, like Ganryu or like Raven. They can't cut Wesley Snipes. What Wesley Snipes cut you? And taxes. Exactly. Anyway. Oh dang! <laughs> that was okay, anyway. over a decade ago, and he served his time. Yeah, he, he did. did. Um, he did. We we want the actual people to to serve time for the crime compared to certain amount of others who evaded every damn day. Yep. True. Like, okay, people are still hot and cold on Ganryu, even though, again, as much before, his wall pressure game is pretty good. But let's say we're still on the fence about him. I would give him a whole Cowboy Bebop ending. Oh, every character would have like a team ending, but also a single ending. If, if you want to play arcade, you know, single player. Mm -hmm. And his, he would get the final blow on uh, Orochi Ogre after taking how many hits and, and, and everybody would be saying blah, blah, blah. But then he'd be like, oh, soy, and then drop 
and then cut the music. Go, and the trail, you know, the whole trail of all the all the music, all the uh, all the cowboy bebop, spike die shit, and then constellation of Ganryu doing sumo poses in the sky. And if he doesn't come back in, the, in Tekken Eight, like, oh, did you see he died? He died over there. And it's like, and just freak the freak the pants out that way. Because I would do that. I would definitely do that. Because people are talking about, well, spoiler alert, you haven't played Tekken 7? Heihachi dies. But it's Heihachi, so who knows? Like, his heart was stopped, and he was thrown into the lava of a live volcano. It was a clone. They probably would do that, but now people are like, "Can we get a Mecha Heihachi?" Please, and no. I'm like, it's like the sad part is I could picture that, and it'd be a nightmare. It'd be like a recurring nightmare, like just oh, oh, oh just bring him back, just a, just a Cyborg Heihachi, because screw it, why not? Just just hilarity all over. And there are other characters that I wanted to get in here, but. They be characters that they be meant to just troll people. Like there's this, like there's this one girl, Lucky Chloe. She is a Japanese idol, but also Caucasian, but also kind of annoying. Like she's the one that made Eddie Gordo look like a joke in Tekken Seven, mm -hmm. in both endings. I remember. So, so it's like, would people pay money for her? Doubtful. Would people want to see her at all in the main roster? Questionable. So, it is like a good idea. So I took her out, and I was going to have Nina not be in the game, but she's too important. Like We had to get her in there somewhere. And like I said, a bunch of characters that had to be in the game because they're just the KOF mainstays. Like, I could have left out Shizuru, but it's like, we need to get her in more games so people can, you know, like her at all. Like, she's the ugly stepchild of the Team Secret Treasures. Like, Kyo gets invited. Kyo gets invited, and then they're like, oh, hey, Shizuru, how are you? You look bland. Anyway, um, I think that's what else I would have said. Oh, Tekken Bowling. That is a mode. Imagine all these characters at a bowling ring. Allie. Allie. Sorry, I was still thinking about fight tournaments, but... But yeah, these characters at the bowling alley, that would be hysterical because you can have Akuma in Tekken 7 bowling. And he's quite good. <laughs> and oh, and another thing with how the uh, with how the HUD works, depending on who you pick, you'll either see like you'll see what they see. With some characters having like like with um let's see Alyssa, prototype Jack, and probably Maxima, they would see like a targeting system for bowling. While I would say Warong would well Warong or Silver would have just just half the screen just blacked out. <laughs> Cause you know the eye patch. Mm -hmm. Their stats would be way up, but they have to, you know, you have to work around the uh, the blind spot part. Okay, and, that doesn't sound bad. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Wrong game. Are you sure? With this Ross type, it might be the right game. What game? Smash.
with 69 characters. Nice. Yeah. Probably. Like I, like I wasn't planning on it, but it turned into that like around me, and I was like, "Haha, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping the 69." Oh, um, last thing, there would be downloadable costumes, and you would get For free. At this point, sure. <laughs> and you would get Garamoga the Wolves Terry. And you would also get uh, Tethok from Mug of the Wolves, who, surprise, big reveal, King of Dimes was actually Tethok the whole time. Okay, so I then, know, right? Oh my if, god! If we're doing this, and I expect the T Pain skin, and I expect the oh my the god, will you stop with that? No, I'm not. I expect those two skins: the T Pain skin, the Wesley Snipes skin. You gotta get those in. No. Anyway. Terry, Tezok, and Rock, and it's Team Mark of the Wolves. So there you go. And oh, there were also well, one good idea from Street Fighter Cross Tekken uh, character cosplays. Because there's because there's some characters that I wanted in the game, but I'm like, okay, you're already here, but over on the other side, like there was this one. Mark of the Wolves character, who basically is Chow Yu in every way. Like, it's like you don't even need another character. You, like, you would just get the costume, and that's it. They, they, they even have the same motivation. It's silly. And, let's see, you would have Heihachi with a geese costume, geese with a Heihachi costume, Kazuya dressed up as Kyo's dad. Just hilarity and insanity and fireworks and a dope ass announcer. That's that's one of the things I would want, just to hype you up during the fight. And whatever stages are iconic, but also just random places around the world. Like South Town or Istanbul or Geese Tower or or, or the G Corp parking lot. Or a random volcano, because that's a thing in Tekken. So random. Ran well, yeah. Anyway, this is the roster. Hope you like it. Hope you would pay for it. You never know. It could happen. Mm -hmm. They have talked... Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, if it was real, would you pay for this? Would you pay the probably 60 bucks, because that's how it is these days, for the whole game at launch? And would you pay $3.99 for each of these DLC characters? $3.99 per character? Sir, <laughs> you have a great business mind, but you are too greedy. You Fine. benefit the company, but you do not benefit the gamers. Well, I mean, I mean, Sonny. I mean, I mean, is 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 not obvious. Look, look at his name. He's here for crazy deals. Now, now, now! Buy it now! Buy it now! Get this deal. <laughs> We're going crazy with these deals. But anyway, um, okay. So for each DLC character, what would be a good price? Get your Sully Street Pack for Free. five bucks. Free. Nah, Street, no. Street Pack for five bucks is fine, and then you you, you do um a, a season passes of um of nine dollars. Oh no, um, okay, so, no, no, no. It, it's not fifteen because technically each if we do each set of three is five dollars, so each season will be ten dollars individually. Or um, uh, let's see, twenty five. Three eight or eight thirty three, as as the um season the the price you pay for the entire season. Eight thirty three for six characters. Yeah. So you're basically paying thirty dollars for eighteen characters. Over sorry twenty five if you buy them all as season pass one two three. If you buy them as as just a single pack, you pay thirty dollars. 
So you save five dollars if you buy them all as um as seasons instead. That is fair. For special deals. So we'll keep it forty for all the characters. Money anyway. See, look look at that. that, that I'm that kidding. I'm uh, kidding. Jesus Christ. All right, I'm I'm kidding. Twenty five. The they each get discount. Now now they now they're all worth twenty five and you the discount gives you put them to twenty. You've lost five dollars on their value. Congratulations. You played yourself. No. <laughs> no. My money. My fight money. <laughs> but anyway, uh yeah, twenty five for all the DLC. That's cool. And don't know what I would do for like well, I wouldn't do a sequel to this. Like if someone else wants to do it, go for it, but this is fine. This is good. But yeah, you got cool. old school. The, the, the sequel would be called um, KOF versus Tekken versus Street Fighter. There you go. Versus. Yeah, actually, Something funny else. enough, if we have KOF, KOF All Stars, like it, it isn't just 10 characters that they got, they also got uh, Guilty Gear characters and WWE characters. WWE oh, people... characters? What? Yeah, yeah, The Rock and um, The Rock, The Undertaker, and some other people. Oh, I thought they got John Cena's Peacemaker. They're probably Peacemaker, no. John Cena, probably. I think he's in there, yeah. See, speaking of, for anyone um, uh, that just doing that quick segue, Peacemaker, it, it, it's worth your time. It, it, the, the, there's three episodes out so far. I give it my seal of approval so far. Okay, uh, I will check it out. Just remember, you must be 18 years or older to watch Peacemaker. I've seen trailers, and yeah, you have to be. <laughs> oh, but yeah, be 18. Or 21 in some countries. Be old enough to watch stuff on TV. See, it's like, yeah. the more we say, uh, the more I feel like kids are going to just Jump it anyway. Well, I mean, that's what we did when we were younger. How many of us played GTA before we were 18? Bro, we was all playing GTA before we were 18. Come on now. There you go. Like, I played, G I played GTA 1 when I was like 8. Yeah. I think I'm pretty sure San Andreas came out when I was 15. So, San Andreas ooh. was like 13, 14 um, with, with San Andreas. I remember it came out. I remember getting it. I played it. Wait, no, 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 you're right. Oh, no. San Andreas PS2. Yeah, PS2. I'm, th came out in 2004. I'm thinking GTA 3, my mistake. Oh, no, Vice City was what I was thinking of. GTA 3, then Vice City, then uh, San Andreas. Then GTA Bicycle Simulator. What the heck is that? San Andreas. Come oh. on, you know the bike was faster than, than most of the vehicles. True. So all you gotta do is work CJ out. Yep, that's it. And you just keep tapping that button, and and then the bike just this speeds down everywhere. You're like pew, just just go go on the bike. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that pretty much wraps everything up. Like, like yes, like like some teams are weird, but that's because Tekken folk don't really know each other that well. Like on paper, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Anna Williams doesn't even know that there even are kings. Like, it's, it's like you think she would notice, but there's no reason to suggest that she does. But they're famous wrestlers, yeah. so. Yeah, but for all like for all we know, she doesn't. She has no idea. Oh yeah, doesn't so, she have amnesia, or was it Nina? It was Nina. But they both got frozen in Tekken Two. So that, so that they get to stay young for Tekken 3. Because Nina failed to kill Kazuya, so the Zaibatsu forced her into a cryotube. And Anna, not to be one-upped, volunteered to go into a cryotube so that she could stay young for Tekken 3 too. Their rivalry is weird. Like really weird. 
It's dumb. Extremely. But then Tekken 7, now they actually have a reason to have an issue with each other because Nina accidentally killed Anna's suddenly but short-lived fiancé. Deserved it. Probably, but nothing was confirmed. Like he was working for G for G Corporation, you know, for Kazuya, and he had mafia ties. And that's all we know. All we know is that Nina was contracted to kill him, but they were specific on her dressing up as the bride to get the job on him. What she did not know was that the bride was her sister. And so, and so Anna is now wildly pissed at Nina and wants to seriously kill her this time. Before it was just for play play. Yeah, I guess. Oh, but the other issue is that uh, Steve Fox, who is her, uh, who is Nina's tube grown baby. Okay, and, and that's and where he, we end it today, everyone. Have a good time. A, no, 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 I was gonna, it's a whole thing, and it's like so many plot yeah. points that, that they really don't go too far deep into, which is weird. Because at that point, it doesn't matter. It's still just a fighting game. I will say, a very good roster. Um, if you guys want to watch more of us or listen to more of us there is the tekken episode that we did did you post it on your youtube yet i did okay so it's the tekken episode where channel i didn't know a jack shit because i don't i don't know tekken well that's okay i don't know anything about king of fighters so well there's a king and there's fighting there you go you know, you know, two things now. Yeah, check out King, King. Crazy's. Uh, there, there she is, right there. Check out King Crazy's YouTube channel where he posts all of the podcast all episodes. This, yeah, all this stuff. The the dope um, dive casting where once you enter, you can't escape. E- each episode you watch puts you into a deeper and deeper hole until you feel the dope dive vibes. <laughs> And if you're interested, here's the Discord where you can join. I haven't been updating a lot recently due to stuff that's been going on in my life, but I will be going back to giving you guys updates. So get on into the Discord if you want. Um, okay, okay. Let, let, let's be serious here, um, Sonny. The reason why you're not decent in Discord is because you don't want to give me Mikhail's Navy. I keep badgering you for it. You're going to get Mikhail's Navy (laughs) some Saturday within the next three months. (laughs) (laughs) You see, that's the type of gaslighting I've come to expect. It's not gaslighting. I said I'm going to give it to you, bro. (laughs) That's because I want Tim Curry in the movie with um, Ash from Evil Dead. You're gaslighting me here. I see how it is. You, you, you're gonna get your, your Mikhail's Navy. <laughs> Navy Knights will be returning soon. Yeah, I have um, no idea what you two are talking about. I literally just said Movie Knights will be returning. We're talking about Movie Knights. Yeah, but like, wait, what was it again? Like, Mikhail's Navy. Mikhail's hmm? Navy. Mick- Mikhail's Navy. M- M-C-H-A-L-E. Basically, it's a show that came out in the 90s where the antagonist is Tim Curry, and I believe Ash is one of the protagonists. Okay. Also, um, just a quick PSA for all of us on the Northeast. Um, if you aren't already in storm weather, you will be getting storm weather soon. Um, we do, um, depending on how much snow may accumulate, it is recommended to have your windscreen wipers up on your vehicles it, to make it easy to clean your car. Correct. Hmm. And I guess one last thing, just real quick about this roster. Because, Sunny, you had said that you don't really know KOF, and Dracon, you said that you don't really know Tekken. That's actually the point. Because in my younger days, I happened upon 
a jukebox of CVS two, you know, Cactus S and K, and I knew. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I had to interrupt. The, the jukebox is just a music machine, my friend. The the arcade box. Arcade machine. Yes, whatever the hell, whatever the hell they're actually called. Oh, and... arcade machine. Because when you said jukebox, I thought you meant it. It had a um a machine that played all the all the songs of um whatever they're called. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I didn't know half these characters, but it was loud. It was colorful. It had a announcer that was constantly telling me what was going on but then like like okay the time has come it's the time for the new history to be born blah 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 like like all this like all this it's like it's like i was little but i was getting so hyped for a cast that i never seen before that was what i thought of when i was making this just a bunch of just a shit ton of characters from all the eras of tekken and kof and you can just dive right in without having to worry too much about the story all you need to know is that all of them are trying to stop this thing. That's it. After that, if you want to join in the actual games, go nuts! But yeah, that, that was my thinking coming into this. Like, making this game for someone who has no idea who any of these people are. And for some of you, even after, even after playing this, you still won't know what Yoshimitsu is. That's fine. We still don't know. What do you mean? Yoshimitsu is a swordsman. And a thief. He's an alien. Doesn't matter if he's an alien. He's a swordsman and a thief. Oh, so it's fine if he's an alien, but not Ogre? Ogre is... Listen. Listen. Ogre's, Ogre's not an alien. Space. No. Ogre it's is in from... The I don't care. Ogre is from South America. Nobody can say anything about that to me. Yeah, he landed in South America. No, he dug up from underneath He's the Earth. He's a space weapon. He's a space bug who took the form of a man. You then say when space. he gets the crap, I'm right. I'm I right. Space you bug space. because we ah, don't understand ah, his I'm species. Right. You hear it? You hear it, ladies and gentlemen? Don't I to him. King Crazy. I'm right. He said. So I I I silence King Crazy for a second because he, he's a nerd. <laughs> they can't hear you. They can't hear you. I am in control here. Oh, good lord! <laughs> it's the outer limits. What? <laughs> have you never watched the outer limits? No. Okay. Have Have you either of you even heard of that show? I've heard of it, of course. Yeah. Okay. At, at one point, the inch is like we control the horizontal, the vertical. And it, it's just like the, so. Yeah, that's, that's when you said you control stuff. Okay, uh, I, I get where you're coming from. Okay, but anyway, I am done. Thank you all for watching. And hopefully you can see our next roster. We've been discussing it. It would be Dissidia 4. To make yeah. up for Dissidia 3. <laughs> because, uh, well, oh boy. We, we, it, it may be, or I may decide to hijack next, next um, podcast with, with my birthday bash podcast. Okay, that's cool. It's not a hijack right. if you say you want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, I want to do this thing. I'm just gonna say, cool, let's do it. Who knows? Yeah, I may, I may just suddenly pop out of nowhere and just, just like, um, here comes a new challenger and just suddenly change up the the, the story. To be honest, we could just play a game. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but we're we don't always have to do a, like talky talky. I'm cool with whatever. Okay, so um, so basically, what Sonny's saying is that he's had enough of us talking and wants us to shut up. Oh no, I, I enjoy the talking. In fact, nah, I was nah, thinking I about tier lists we could I, do. I understand, Sonny. I will ban you. I need to ban people all the time. Like, what is, it's like Sonny? The power. What is the, I, what, I threaten what is people the with power my gonna, power. Look at the that. Power the power sun the sun has gone head. to my head. No, it hasn't gone to my head because you haven't been banned yet. The sun has gone down. Darkness the, the, rises. The, actually, wait. That's right. The sun is his head. <laughs> I'm very bright. Okay, that's fine. Um, next time, um, I'll build a Dyson sphere. Next time on Dope Dive Live Kai. Jesus Christ.
All right, y'all. Um, really, will no one, Sonny no one power can. up to become the Super Sola to defend the universe against the evil forces of the crazy with kings? Final not my evil. And more. No, 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 no. I am. I'm not evil. I'm justified. It's different. Find out uh, this and more on the next time of Dope Dive Live. I feel like King Crazy would be the party member who betrays us and then comes back after we kick his butt. <laughs> Alright, so he's Vegeta? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, y'all. We're, well, we, we're leaving. Well, I'm not well, reading anybody today. Well, if I'm Vegeta, then that's, that's pretty good. In the chat, there are links. There's a YouTube channel that King Crazy posts to. There's a Discord that some people are semi-active in sometimes, once in a while. I don't care. But Like, follow, and obey. Mikhail's Navy! Oh my god. <laughs> Stay dope, y'all. Laters. Bye.